Well, welcome back. Today's show, we're going to discuss why somebody would want to upgrade their license to their general or to a general license. So that's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. So welcome back. This is Ham Radio for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL. And today we're going to discuss just briefly, uh, you know, say you don't have any license and you're going to go take, you want to go take your uh, ham license, you know, how to do that. But what if you already got your tech? Why would you want to upgrade to general? Well, I put together a short presentation just to kind of show you a couple things and a little background story on this. When I originally got into ham radio, I had no intention of going as far as I have now, especially now the YouTube channel and everything else. It just kind of, I got directed into it. Uh, it just, the opportunity opened up. I saw a reason to go out there and maybe share some of my knowledge, as limited as it might be at the moment, but help others that might be in that same boat and have those same questions. Maybe you have no place else to go to find the information you're looking for. So I want to hopefully be that bridge or the, to bridge, help bridge that gap and get you to uh, do something. So let's pop over to my desktop real quick and we'll start the presentation. So why upgrade to general? You know, when I got my, uh, when I got into ham radio, when this is way, way back in January, February of this year, so you know, it hadn't been a whole long time, uh, I had no intention of going up any further. I was going to get a, you know, HT radio, call it done, emergency comms are needed, maybe hit a couple people on a repeater, blah, blah, blah. And then I started researching and watching other YouTube channels out there and seeing all the stuff people were doing and the fun they were having with it, the more equipment that they got, this and that. So let's run through real quick just what, what, I, what I've uh, presented here. Right now, one of the biggest reasons to get your, either your technician or upgrade to general is that your test is still only $15. Now, that's going to very rapidly or soon, it's, it's soon to go up. Uh, I still don't have a date on that. It's supposed to go up to $35 for the test and then $15 for the exam for like a total of like 50 bucks. Right now it's $15 for everything, minus your study materials and books and stuff. So if if nothing else, if you have your technician, right now would be a great time to study for and grab your general a as soon as possible so you're done with it. Um, you know, go ahead and get that done. The second reason, the general test is not that much harder than the technician test. Yes, there's a little bit more technical stuff involved in it. Yes, it will take you a little bit more than just a week or so to study for it. But overall, it's still like 435 questions. You still get the 35 questions on the test that are randomly selected. And of those, you got to get 26 correct to pass and get your general. But, you know, other than that, if you if you study, and I'm going to show you some some things here, I've, I've got I've done the research for you um, to help you get 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 in your general license. Uh, however, for those of you who have never had any kind of a ham license, uh, consider taking both tests. Or get, yeah, t consider taking both tests at the time you get your tech test session done, because what's going to happen is you'll take your technician, you'll pass that easy peasy, right? Then, when you're after they grade that, if you pass that test, the VEs in the test session will say, "Hey, you passed your tech. Would you like to take general?" And you go, "Yes, please. I want my general." Go ahead and take your general. Again, the same thing will happen if you pass your general. They'll offer you, offer you the option to take your uh, your extra. So if you want to go that far, if you want to study for all three and just get all three done and get it out of the way and be done with it forever, go for it. You know, no reason not to. But I'm just saying, for fifteen dollars, initially you could effectively pass all three tests and get all three licenses in one day. Uh, of course, that's a a lot of studying to do if you want to pass all three. Two is still going to be a challenge, but two is still doable. Uh, so I would consider that if you're if you're looking to get into that. If you have no if you have no if you have no license whatsoever in ham radio and you're looking to get into it, consider that. So why again would you upgrade to general? That you have your tech. It will give you more understanding of ham radio. It explains more stuff in depth. Technicians kind of like here's get it gets your feet wet. Here's what ham radio is. Here's some basics of it. Blah, blah, blah. Here, go have fun. General is going to add a little bit more to that, and it's going to uh, open up a lot more information to you about ham radio, a lot more of the hows and whys, the technical stuff, the 
electronic parts of it, uh, you know, more about propagation, things like that. But you get a lot more information there. And some of it's going to be a little bit overkill, but it's all good, necessary information for you to have. Um, another big advantage is it opens up a ton of new frequencies to you on HF, more so than the tech level license. I'm going to get into that in just a second here because we're going to talk about that more in depth. But you get an access to way more channels and way more frequencies than you have right now as a tech. Um, so if that, that alone ought to be a, a big, big seller. Uh, next thing is it opens up more radio choices with features you can actually use. So instead of just running around using your little VHF, UHF, HT, you can now go after all kinds of other radios out there that have all kinds of features and all kinds of other stuff that you're now have the privileges to use based on your level of license. So I think that is a very good reason. I mean, these are all good reasons, but I think that's a very good reason. It, it allows you to get more radios. Now, the downside is, uh, you know, you can get more radios, but more radios are now more expensive. So here we go, sucking money out of your wallet again, right? Uh, next thing is you'll have an opportunity opportunity to either buy or make antennas for those frequencies. So you can purchase HF antennas like I have. You've seen some of my videos. Where I bought the MPAS 2.0. I bought the Pactenna. I bought the uh, QRP guys antenna. So you have those options to you, or you can turn around and do some of the research I, we did this in the uh, when we made that Walmart antenna. I showed you guys about the antenna handbook, and uh, you know if you want to learn the theory of that and really get in there and just start building out antennas, go have an antenna farm in your backyard where you're raising tomatoes and antennas. Uh, you can do that. That's now open to you. Uh, next thing on here is you get an increase in power up to 1,500 watts pep, pep on HF, whereas tech is only 200 watts. So that's a nice advantage and Having that extra power may help you be able to do other things in ham radio. Um, another big seller on this is you will be able to reach other hams around the world. Right now, you, you're limited. If you have your tech, you're limited to whatever you can reach on a repeater or by line of sight or using simplex, whatever, on one of these. Uh, There's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do to reach around the world with it. However, you go into HF, and all of a sudden... Uh, this new world opens to you, literally, literally the whole world. And you can contact people in other countries, contact. I mean, it's, it's just, there's so much other stuff you can do by just bumping up from that one little level. And I know I'm, I'm really selling this hard here. I, I'm trying to make a point. You know, I, I want you guys to consider this because you might, you know, maybe, maybe if you don't have a use for this, blow it off. You know, but if you have any kind of interest in reaching more people, being able to play with some of the better stuff and enhancing your skills and increasing your skill level in ham radio, general is really the ticket for that. Uh, and finally on here, POTA and SOTA is a lot more fun with a general license. So, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, again, this goes on to everything else I listed here previously. You have more opportunity, more frequencies, more bands. Everything's just more, all right? So on the actual general test, let's take a look at the breakdown here. And I will go over to this. And, all right. So there are 10 sections to the test similar to what you had in your uh, technician. The first one goes over FCC rules and regulations. That's just standard. It's now more stuff about um, more things you're able to do now. Yeah, it'll reiterate a couple of things from your previous from learning technician. Uh, G2, second section here, is operating procedures. You have more new operating procedures to go through. Uh, G3 goes through radio wave propagation. And that explains a lot more about propagation because now you have access to bigger antennas, more frequencies, and more things to do. So that's uh, that's going to help you learn about that those items. Uh, of course, general ham radio practices, electrical principles and circuit components, and practical circuits. Uh, these are all things you learned somewhat in technician, but it's going to get a little bit more advanced now. They're going to add a couple more little things in there for you to kind of know and learn about, and it's for the benefit of you and in your ham radio hobby. Um, you'll learn about signals and emissions, and, of course, it goes into a big thing about antennas and feed lines, and then finally, of course, it's electrical and, and RF uh, safety. If you look in the middle here, you'll, know, you'll see a number of questions you'll get per section, so that kind of helps you out, give you an idea. And again, taking the test, I mean, studying for it, I studied for it in about 
two weeks. And that, along with a couple other things, which I'm going to show you here shortly, will help you to really, really ace this test and get in there and do it. Uh, the final section of here is the percent of the exam that these questions fall under. Again, I just want to bring you guys much as much uh, information, as much useful information as I could. All right, let's get out of this and let's go to the next part of this speech, which is, what do you have right now? Well, if you're a technician, you look on this chart that I made here. This is on the ham radios for not ham radio for non techies.com website. I made up a thing showing you the different bands, then technician, general, and extra, and your privileges on each of these bands under those particular license levels. So under technician, you can see here, you don't really get a lot. You get a little bit on 80 and 75 meter, but it's only in CW. Well, if you don't know Morse code, that's kind of useless. Same thing on 40 meter. You have a couple privileges in CW. 15 meter, CW. 10 meter, it's mostly CW, and you have a very small little tiny window where you can actually use a phone or voice. And then of course, you got six meter, uh, which is mostly CW and a little bit of phone. And then you have, of course, two meter, 1.25, 0.7, blah, blah, blah. It goes on down. Uh, but you see where you've got your privileges on here. So now let's go back up to the top here. Let's pop over just to general. Now look what's happened. You have all the privileges on 2,200 meters, 630, 160, 80 to 75. You have the majority. Let's see. Okay, you don't. You have a little bit less than you do over here with extra, but not by much. Not by much at all. Um, you'll get five channels on 60 meter. Uh, 40 meter, you'll get phone and, and CW. You get a whole lot more, a wider range here of frequencies. And actually, it's the same frequency, phone phone voice. The phone frequencies on this are the same as they are in, uh, oh, no, they're a little bit, you get a little bit uh, more with uh, extra. So there are, there are a couple little differences. But, you know, you can go on here and look on the site. I don't want to go through all of these things. You're intelligent enough to go on the website and look at it for yourself. And to find this, it's under ham radio tips and ham frequencies by license. I made that special page just for this topic. Uh, but you can see you get a lot more with having the general license. There's no reason to not jump in this unless you, unless you just have no interest in this whatsoever, in which case, you know, in, enjoy 144 and 440. Um, but I think for anybody that wants to really jump on and get into some of these other frequencies in here, that's a massive privilege upgrade for just taking a simple little test. So I really, you know, really consider this stuff. Um, I think it's worth it. I'm still on the fence as to whether I'm actually going to go up and get my, my, my extra. Um, Cause I mean, I see that there are a couple of different more frequency uh, privileges that you're given with extra. I'm just not sure if I want to go, go through and deal with it. Uh, so that's, you know, it's up to, it's up to each individual to determine what they want to do. So this brings me to the next section. We are on the front page of my website. And I've talked about this before. If you are a tech and you want to study for your general, you can come down here. This is the section for technicians. The next section here is for general. And the third section is for extra. But right here are the three books that I recommend. I highly recommend the, uh, Get your pass your amateur radio general class test the easy way. It's basically just answer, questions and answers and a little bit of background. If you're one of those that really can't, you really want to know more about the background and stuff, then I suggest uh, Gordon West books are very very good, and I've got I've got these as well. They give you a lot more background and they give you the, the questions and answers uh, throughout the testing, so you can you can figure all this stuff out and study. And then finally is the A double -A RL uh, book which I found to be, I mean, it's good information, but it was kind of felt like I was reading the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the other two books are a little bit more uh, interactive, if you, if you may. Um, so those are the books that I recommend for that if you're going to study, and it'll get you going. You know, get both of them. Get the, get the, get the, uh, the first book there, the, uh, get this first book right here, and get the second book here, and, and use both of them. Read through them. You might get different perspectives on things. You're going to find new ways of memorizing these questions and answers and understanding what's going on in the uh, 
the uh, testing. So once you have that stuff down, that's just the books. So now you want to practice. Well, I have set up for you guys the three online places that I went to when I was studying and practicing for my tests for the big day. Uh, QRZ.com is has an excellent resource. You sign up for free. You can take the practice test. It, it takes you through all the tests that are current and keeps a scoreboard of how you did in those tests. HamExam.org, same thing. HamStudy.org, same thing. Um, I believe, yeah, HamExam.org not only has practice tests for all three exams, but they have a flashcard section where you ju it just flashes different questions in front of you. Very, very useful. It'll help to just kind of spark your memory. When I see these words, this is the answer. Whatever it takes to get you to pass this test. And again, you only have to do it once, and you're good. Let's go further. But wait, there's more. I have also gone online and found all three of the ham practice test apps for both Android and Apple. So the links are right here. You can click them on your phone, download them directly to your thing. They're all, this is all free stuff. Uh, so you can, you can practice these things on your phone. So if you're on the go, you say you got your nine to five, you're sitting at lunch, run a practice test, run two or three practice tests, see how well you're doing. You know, get, keep, keep that stuff fresh on your mind. So when you go in there for test day, it's a breeze for you. You're like, oh, I know that question. Boom, there's the answer. So these are the three big things that I set up for you guys on this website to help you practice, study, and pass your tests, whichever ones you choose to do. Uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it on that. Uh, once you pass your test, of course, down here, I have ham radio apps for your phone. Some of them are ham radio related, but some are just like scanners and things. These are all great apps to have. All well worth checking out. Um, if you know, if you get an Echo Link or if you get an APRS, uh, of course, Repeater Book and the, the, the new Hammers app was just released uh, recently. I believe, I believe it's free for like Windows, but if you buy the, if you get the app for your phone, it's actually like four ninety nine. Either way, great deal, not a not a not a big problem. Okay, so we are done with our presentation here. So in conclusion, guys, you know, whether you decide to go and get your general is entirely up to you. I just presented you the reasons or arguments for why I think it's important to get one. And you might find other ones. Maybe you have reasons against it, you know, whatever. I just think that it's important that if you're going to get into the hobby, that you try to strive to go for as, as far as you can comfortably. You know, like I said, I'm still on the fence about going into my going and getting my uh, getting my extra, and it may or may not happen. We'll see. Anywho, uh, don't forget go to hamradiofornontechies.com. You'll find all those uh, resources that I gave to you right on the front page. I want to make that first and foremost on the front page when you see the site. And you know, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you use some of my suggestions here. If it helped you pass your test. And, you know, how you did. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. That'll help YouTube show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio topics. And if you like my channel so far and I've earned it, uh, I would ask you to please subscribe and click on the little bell to be notified when I do new videos. And until then, guys, this is Ham Radio for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL. And I will be clear. <laughs>